Oh, hello Sister Simple. How are you? Hello, Mr. Trinitarian. I am fine. Thank you. Look, I have a question for you. Where in scripture do you ever find Christians saying, in Jesus' name, at the end of any prayer? Oh, that's easy. It's used all the time in scripture. Such as where? Oh. Colossians 3.17 Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You haven't answered my question. The word name, which is anoma, in Greek, simply means, to do all in the authority of Christ, at Colossians 3.17. Now I'm asking you for a text, where we read a prayer by a Christian, which ends with the specific words, in Jesus' name. Well, it's all over the scriptures. So I pity you, if you are too blind to see it. You said to me, the last time that we met, that this phrase, in Jesus' name, is tagged onto the end of Christian prayers, all over the Bible. Well, in that case, show me just one single verse which uses these exact words, in Jesus' name. The baptismal formula, is in the name of Jesus, yes it is, amen. Fine. Then show me just one verse, where somebody, is in the water, and somebody else says, I baptize you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Acts 2.38. It says that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the baptismal formula. Actually no. These Jews were commanded to go and get baptized upon the authority of Jesus, at Acts 2.38, because he is the Christ. Now, name is the Greek word, anoma, which can mean authority. But no baptismal formula is even given in Acts chapter 2. If you read Acts 2.41, it simply says that 3,000 were baptized. And this verse does not give any baptismal formula. If one was indeed, even used. So where do we read that anyone prayed, adding the words, in Jesus' name, at the end of their prayers? This is ridiculous. You are filled with pride and a spirit of hatred. Scripture forbids debate. Romans 1.29 in my King James Version lists debate as one of a number of evil sins. Well if debate really is a sin, then why did you quote Romans 1.29 to me, and thereby debate me? You shouldn't debate. You should surrender your theology immediately, if you really do think that it is a sin to debate. Now show me any verse where Christians finished any prayer, or exorcism, with the words, in Jesus' name. It's all over the Bible. Where? Well, at 1 Corinthians 1, 2, we read, that they called on the name of the Lord. What does that mean? Well, it means, that they said the words, in Jesus' name, at the end of their prayers to Jesus. Fine. Then show me a verse in 1 Corinthians where they said those exact words, in Jesus' name, at the end of their prayers. You have a demon of argumentation. La fallibala occur, alatash, tash te, tonto. Amen. O oh glory. Sha, la fallibala curala, mina shame of it, glory tash tash te, tonto. Amen. Ah, tash, tonto. Look, I'll be happy if you just answer my question. Show me any verse where Christians said these exact words, in Jesus' name, at the end of their prayers. Oh yes. I've just remembered. At Acts 19.13, the seven sons of Sava called out the name of Jesus over some demon-possessed people. And what happened to the seven sons of Sava when they called out the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had the evil spirits? Well, the demons then overpowered them. So these were Jewish exorcists who'd heard of Jesus Christ, but who did not know him as their savior. They then called out the name of Jesus Christ over some demon-possessed folks at Acts 19.13. But they were then overpowered by them and fled away naked and wounded from these demon-possessed folk. This is the only instance in the Bible of the name of Jesus Christ ever being spoken aloud, verbatim over somebody at the end of a prayer. And it is the unsaved, who are using the name Jesus in this way. The unsaved sister simple. 
not the Christians. But they did call out the actual words. Lord Jesus, over these demon-possessed people. Didn't they? Yes, I would agree. But it didn't do them any good whatsoever. As they were completely overpowered by these evil spirits, and then fled away from them naked, and ashamed. You see, just repeating the words. Lord Jesus. Is useless, if Christ is not your genuine and true Lord. So why do you believe that true Christians didn't need to repeat the words? In Jesus name. At the end of their prayers. Christ is our prophet, priest and king. This latter title, king, was assumed by Christ at his resurrection. In Jewish thought, a king was begotten for a second time when he took his throne. The Jews did not have the term coronation. So they called his ascension to a throne. A begetting. This is why Psalm 2, 7. You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Is quoted at Acts 13, 33, and Hebrews 1, 5, in the context of Christ becoming king, at his resurrection. Now at our conversion, we are likewise born for a second time. And we then begin to become co-rulers, with Christ. But only in a limited sense. Now all true Christians share in Christ's authority. This is why we don't need to repeat the words. Lord Jesus. As if like Harry Potter, we can use the words of this name as some magical spell. So as Christians, all of our prayers, are in Christ's name. Meaning in his authority. But what's wrong with saying, in the name of Jesus, at the end of our prayers? To say in Jesus' name, means his authority. But there is no point in asking for his authority, when we already have it. So as a co-ruler in heavenly places, with Christ, I now partake in some limited capacity, in Christ's authority as King. This will be fully realized at Christ's second coming. So I don't need to keep invoking what I already have. Look if I were the President of the United States of America, then after I am sworn in as President, then I don't need to keep on saying, in the name of the President of the United States of America, after every sentence, as if my authority as President would be made completely invalid without my saying, in the name of the President of the United States of America, at the end of every sentence, so the President already has the authority, he got it when he swore the oath of office. So all true Christians, already share in Christ's authority as King. We don't need to repeat the words. In Jesus' name. Because we already possess this authority. But what is wrong with saying, in Jesus' name, at the end of every prayer and sentence? Well that's using the name of Jesus, just like a magical spell. Look, at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft. Harry Potter in the fictional film series, has to recite certain spells perfectly in Latin, or else the magic won't work. Sadly, that is precisely how many oneness Pentecostals also use the name of Jesus. As a magical spell which must be uttered correctly, or else the Jesus power, will not be sent down to you. That's pure witchcraft. It's using the name of Jesus Christ. Just like a witch or a wizard casts a spell, at Hogwarts. But if you don't use the name Jesus, then isn't it possible that you could be praying to another god? I am not going to pray to Allah, or Krishna, or to the god of Mormonism, as I know that they are false gods. My prayers are directed to God the Father, through Jesus Christ. Certainly I will occasionally use the name Father, or Jesus, but that's not my point. My point is this. I don't need to tag the phrase. In Jesus name. On to the end of all of my prayers. Because I already have Christ's authority. So to pray in Jesus name. Means to pray in his authority. And as I already possess that authority. Then I don't need to keep on asking repeatedly. For what I already possess. So the phrase. In Jesus name. Means in Jesus authority. And I already possess that authority. Then, am I sinning if I say, in Jesus' name, at the end of all of my prayers? No. It's certainly not a sin. 
but it is a sign of a person's immaturity, if they have an obsession that a prayer, is not really a genuine prayer, unless they say, in Jesus' name, at its conclusion. You see, when Christ gives us a gift, then he expects us to use that gift, and not to keep on asking for it, over and over again. Unfortunately, rather than act on Christ's authority, evangelizing and preaching with boldness and power. Many Christians today don't evangelize at all. And so they are weak and immature, because they repeatedly keep asking for power. Over and over again, but they will not act upon that power which God has already given them. By Robert Skinner